folks, HR Funk here with a brand new firearm review. Now a while back I started feeling like adding something a little different to my collection and what appealed to me was the idea of adding a single action revolver. Now initially I thought I wanted one of the Colt single action army clones from companies like Uberti or Cimarron and although some of those are very nice revolvers and they're very affordably priced for one reason or another I just never picked one up. Then recently while perusing the website of a local firearms retailer, I saw this flat top Ruger Bisley Blackhawk. And initially when I saw this on the website, I didn't think I was interested in it. I thought I wanted something styled a little bit more like the Old West revolvers. But the more I thought about this revolver, the more I liked it. For one thing, it's a very strong modern action, so I'm not worried about any ammunition that I might be firing through it. It can also be carried safely with six rounds in the chambers because of its transfer bar mechanism and it has a set of sights that I can actually see as opposed to just the groove top strap on the single action army clones. So again the more I thought about this revolver the more I liked it and I went ahead and ordered it and here it is today. So I'm going to be doing a review on the Bisley Blackhawk. Now this revolver does come in both five and a half inch versions which I have here and a 4 and 5 8 inch version and it comes in both blued and stainless steel models. So what I'm going to say really is going to apply to all of the models in this series and let's get to it and take a close-up look at my brand new flat top Ruger Bisley Blackhawk revolver. One of the first things that caught my attention about the flat top Bisley Blackhawk is the cartridge that it's chambered for. This revolver is chambered for the 44 Special cartridge now some of you may be wondering why I didn't opt for the more powerful 44 Magnum revolver. The reason is because since this is a 44 Special and not the Magnum, Ruger builds it on its slightly smaller 357 Magnum size frame. So this is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter than the 44 Magnum Blackhawks. Also, as a hand loader, the 44 Special has a lot of appeal to me. I can use this cartridge to load down to light loads for plinking and small game all the way up to ammunition that comes close to the power of the 44 Magnum cartridge. And I like the 44 Magnum a lot and if I want the extra power of the 44 Magnums I can grab one of my 44 Magnum revolvers. But for all the other times the 44 Special is a very good cartridge and well as the name implies it's just special. Starting from the top and working my way down, I can show you once again that this is a flat top revolver, which harkens back to the original Blackhawks that Ruger manufactured back during the 1950s. If you see some of their newer revolvers, you'll notice a projection on either side of the rear sight coming up from the top strap to protect that rear sight. A lot of people, including me, think the flat top version just looks a little bit better. This revolver also has a fully adjustable rear sight and a ramped front sight. Now when I look at these sights, and I don't know if I can get it in the camera for you to see, there is not a great deal of light that you can see on either side of the front sight. The front sight really takes up most of this rear sight notch, which I think is going to allow the potential for some very accurate shooting, but it also doesn't allow really rapid target acquisition. And one thing that I wish was different is that there was just something to make this front sight contrast a little bit more. Maybe a gold bead or something like that in there. Now there are replacement sights that are available that have a fiber optic front sight, but to me on a single action revolver that's just a little too anachronistic. I would prefer again something like a gold bead up there, maybe a white outline on the rear sight, but just something to help give that a little bit more definition for when you need to pick up that front sight quickly. One nice thing about this fully adjustable rear sight, since the revolver is chambered for the 44 Special cartridge, which has such a wide variety of bullet weights and velocities, I can dial in this rear sight for the specific load that I'm using. So again, that was one of the things that I contemplated when I was thinking about this revolver, since it's chambered for the 44 Special, the more I thought about it, the more I liked having that fully adjustable rear sight. Moving on, we can see two of the most visible characteristics of the Bisley styled revolvers. The first being the lowered hammer spur to make it easier to cock. 
and also the Bisley style or Bisley contoured grip frame. This revolver also has a rounded trigger guard, unlike some of the other Ruger Blackhawks. My very first 44 Magnum revolver was a Ruger Super Blackhawk that I owned many years ago. And one of the things that I remember about that revolver is the squared off trigger guard on the Blackhawk style revolvers would bang against that top finger when I would fire heavy loads through that revolver. Due to the grip frame and the rounded trigger guard, I'm not expecting to have any kind of issue like that with the Blackhawk Bisley. The six shot cylinder of the Blackhawk Bisley is fluted, which I like. With some of the Blackhawks, and especially the Super Blackhawks, they have an unfluted cylinder. I much prefer the looks of the fluted cylinder, so I'm glad, at least for the visual appeal, that the Bisley Blackhawk does have that fluted cylinder as well. As far as the fit and finish on this revolver, the metal to metal fit between the parts, and I'll see if I can show you some of these lines right there. I can't even feel these with my finger where the grip frame meets the frame here or where the trigger guard meets the frame. I can't even feel where those come together. So that's very good fitting and very good machining. I can just barely feel those junctures on this side of the revolver. So the metal to metal fit of the major parts, I would give a solid A. The wood to metal fit, on the other hand, I don't think I could give quite as high a grade to. You can see the gap there between the grip panel and the grip frame itself. And also when I turn it this way, you can see that there is quite a bit of the grip frame that comes up above the grip panels. So the wood to metal fit, I would probably give a C plus, maybe a B minus. The bluing is very good, very even, very deep bluing. I would give the bluing a solid A, but I also notice that you can see a lot of the buffing marks still in the metal here underneath the bluing. So for the polishing or buffing, of the metal I would give probably an A minus. So overall fit and finish I would give a B plus. Now this is the point in the review where I have to tell you that this is actually the second Bisley Blackhawk that was shipped to my firearms retailer for my order. The first one when I received it I noticed when I would cock the action that right there it would become very stiff and I had to apply a great deal of extra pressure to the hammer spur in order to cock the action. And in fact, there were a couple of times that I tried to cock it and it stopped right there and I could not pull it back to the fully cocked position. It just basically locked the action. So I refused to accept that very first one and asked to have another revolver sent to me from Lipsy's. So this is the second one. And I have to say, it still exhibits some degree of that same problem. I pull it back to there, and then it feels like the hammer binds a little bit against something. I'm not sure what's going on there. It seems like it's gotten a little bit better during the time that I've owned the revolver, just from cocking it and releasing the hammer, cocking it and releasing the hammer. So that may eventually work itself out. But I really think this is something Ruger should take a closer look at when they are doing their quality control checks on these revolvers. And if they have an issue like that, maybe do just a little bit of smoothing in order to make sure. And here again, that's still, when it hits just the right spot, very difficult to cock with just one thumb. That should not be that difficult for a single action revolver. I should be able to cock it very easily with my thumb and not have to use the thumb of my non-shooting hand or whatever. So again, I'll keep you apprised of that. If it eventually does work itself out, I'll do an update to this video and let you know that it was just a break-in issue. But again, I think coming from the factory, the action should be a little bit better than that. 
Okay folks, it's time to see just where the trigger is breaking on my Blackhawk Bisley revolver. I've broken out my trusty Lyman trigger pull scale and we'll see just how it does here. Right at four and a half pounds, four pounds, eight ounces. Let's try one more. A little bit lighter, four pounds, six ounces. So not a bad trigger pull on the Blackhawk Bisley. That's just about right for field use. I don't want an extremely light trigger on a revolver that I'm going to be carrying a field and using for hunting or whatever I'm doing as I'm wandering around. But at the same time, it's not overly heavy. So four and a half pounds, not bad. The one other thing that I notice about the trigger on the Blackhawk Bisley is it does exhibit a little bit of creep. And I'll try to do this so you can see it. If you watch my trigger finger closely as I'm squeezing slowly, you can see some movement there. There was a little bit more movement than the hammer finally falls. I'll try that again as I'm squeezing. There's some movement. There's a little more movement and then the hammer finally falls. So not a lot of creep in the trigger, but there is just a little bit that I notice and it's something to be aware of if you're going to try to make very precise shots. This is not a target trigger. It is more of a field trigger. Now over the years, Ruger constructed some of the components for their Blackhawk revolvers from alloy as opposed to steel. And I thought I would do a quick test on the various components of my Bisley Blackhawk. So what I have here is a simple refrigerator magnet. I'm going to check the ejector rod housing first, and that's definitely steel. The grip frame next, which is steel. And last but not least, the trigger guard, which is also steel. So this revolver is of all steel construction which does make it a little bit heavier. This revolver weighs in at between two and a half and three pounds, which when firing heavier 44 special ammunition, that should come in handy as far as helping dampen the recoil and should work in conjunction with the grip contour to make those a little bit more pleasant and manageable to shoot. But overall, I like the all steel construction. I'll put up with the extra heft just to have that good, beefy, strong revolver when I'm shooting particularly the more powerful ammunition that I'll run through this. The barrel cylinder gap on my Blackhawk Bisley is coming in right at four one thousandths of an inch, which is not bad for a production revolver. I wouldn't mind seeing it just a little tighter than that, but that should help prevent the cylinder face from dragging against the forcing cone if it gets a little bit of lead buildup on there. So, all in all, like I said, not too bad for a production revolver. So that's pretty much it for the shop review of my Lipsy's exclusive 44 Special Flat Top Ruger Bisley Blackhawk. Now it's time to head out to the range and do some shooting with this revolver and see how it performs. And just like that, folks, I've arrived out at the range to take my new Bisley Blackhawk revolver on a test drive and see how it's going to perform. In just a couple of minutes, I'm going to start to shoot this revolver through a series of tests. Now, I'm not going to be using my standard handgun testing battery. That's more geared toward defensive firearms. So instead, I'm going to focus on the accuracy of this revolver. And I also want to see if the action starts to loosen up when I do start to shoot it. And I hear there might be a rogue water bottle desperado or two running around the area. I may have to fend them off before everything's said and done. And I'll see if there's anything else I can find to shoot at while I'm out here to keep this part of the video interesting. For my first test, I'm just going to be starting off with a standard 30-foot slow-fire accuracy drill. One thing I did want to demonstrate for anyone who's not familiar with Ruger revolvers, in order to load the revolver, all you have to do is open the loading gate and that frees the cylinder for loading and unloading. Unlike a Colt, where you have to pull the hammer to half cock, you do not have to do that with the Ruger, or at least with the new model Rugers. The original Blackhawks did have that same feature as the Colt and you had to pull the hammer to half cock. But with this one, all I have to do is open the loading gate, insert the cartridges as I rotate the cylinder as necessary. 
And as I said before, this is safe to carry with six cartridges loaded into the revolver. And I'm all loaded up. Now let's see what kind of accuracy I can get out of this revolver. And I'm hitting a little bit high at that distance of 30 feet, which is not altogether surprising because I haven't shot this revolver before, so I've done nothing to dial in the sights for this load. This load, by the way, I should have identified before. This is the Skeeter Skelton 44 Special Load. If you're not familiar with what that is, do a quick Google search on Skeeter Skelton 44 Special Load, and you'll find out exactly what it is. But essentially, it's pushing a 240 grain cast semi-wide cutter at a velocity of about 950 feet per second out of the five and a half inch barrel of this revolver. And I've made a quick sight correction and loaded back up. So let's try that 30 foot drill one more time and see if the revolver is a little bit more dialed in now than it was for the first six shots. And I think I'm going to call that sighted in. Five out of those six shots basically went into about a one-inch group right here in the target. I pulled the very first one a little bit low. I'm sure this was me. The other five are right there, and I'm very happy with that. I don't think I'm going to touch the sights again. Okay, folks, let's change things up a little bit and try the Bisley Blackhawk from a distance of 50 yards, and we'll see how it performs from back here. And maybe not a phenomenal group from 50 yards, but they're all more or less staying on the target. This one is just off, but that's definitely minute of deer, minute of bad guy. So again, not too bad with the Bisley Blackhawk from that distance of 50 yards. Okay, folks, good against paper targets is one thing, but a real challenge just showed up. 
three water bottle desperados just arrived on the scene and they've all been staying outside for the last several nights in this cold Ohio weather we've been having so they all think they're pretty hard. I'm going to see if I can soften them up with three rounds of 44 special ammunition out of the Blackhawk Bisley. I would say that softened them up right nicely. Folks, there's only one question left to answer. Is the Black Hawk Bisley a 20-foot tack driver? I've got three rounds loaded up into the revolver, so let's find out. Not on the first shot, got two to go. Just over top of it. And with the third shot, it's a 20 foot tack driver. And there you have it, folks. That's my review of this Lipsy's exclusive 44 Special Ruger Flat Top Bisley Blackhawk Revolver. By the way, that is quite a mouthful to get out without stumbling over your words. In any regard, I'm very happy with the new single action addition to my collection. It does have a couple of rough edges, which I've noted in my review. Hopefully I'll get those smoothed out in time. But overall, I'm very happy with the revolver. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you order anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you order from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.